Hello, this is a report, final report of pattern recognition EEL 6825. My name is Heng. Today I'm going to introduce the American Sign Language Gesture Recognition by Deep Neural Network. Um, so let's, let's take a look at the introduction. So this presentation will separate into the following part. We will introduce the training image and we will show the training output and the test image. And so the basic workflow is presenting below. Firstly, we will input the training image, which is a hand gesture image. And then we output the training image and we input the test image. And then the neural network will output the corresponding later image. After that, we will add the Gaussian noise into the training image to see how the neural network will capture the features up, uh, with the noise corrupt, corrupted image. And then we will show the noise corrupted result and plot the error in a nicely format of graph. Okay, so um, this is the workflow graph of the entire project. So as you can see right here, we will get a gesture image. Uh, we call it the data set number one, and we convert the gesture image into grayscale image and convert the data set one into black and white only. This is a normalization. So it's a part of uh, image process. So, uh, how to process the image will be a challenge right here because in a computer program, each color image will be represented a pixel value. So we must convert the image into grayscale value before we put those images into training or testing process. And then we split the data set into um, test, test data and the training data. The training data set will contain a data, which is a gesture image, and the label. The label will be the data set number one, which is also the image. Then we will do the training process. We output the training result. We will define the deep neural network. And for data process, we will just input the gesture image without a label, and we add noise. Uh, and then we plot the test result to see uh, how this model works. And we will do a lot of evaluation works to see the performance of this neural network. Um, this is a training image. Uh, as you can see on the left, it's noiseless training image. You cannot see uh, a white dot like the right side. So it's pretty clear and the pixel is 16 times 16. And uh, on the right is the image with noise. We add the 35 cross section with a standard deviation and zero mean Gaussian noise. So you can see uh, there's a lot of white dots on the image. So, <laughs> The workflow of adding the Gaussian noise is we will generate the noise randomly based on a standard deviation. We will describe a standard deviation in the paper and we add the noise value into the input image. Uh, we normalize the noise corrupted image. So the pixel value will be the interval of zero to one. So beside the Gaussian noise, there are various kinds of noise that meet the needs of noise adding. Uh, we will talk a lot in detail about how the noise impact the entire testing process in the paper. So if you want to see the detailed information, please refer the paper. So uh, one of the feature of this project is hetero associative memory. Well, um, hetero associative memory refers refers the input dimension and the output dimension is not identical. So 
A neural network that stores input output pattern pairs are uh, recalling or store output pattern by receiving a noisy or a complete version of the store input pattern paired with that output pattern. So in each pattern, the input mode should be different from the output mode, which means the dimension is not uh, exactly the same. So in this paper, we use a healer associative architecture. You can see the art architecture image on the left, which means we will input a gesture picture, then output its corresponding letter, and then output the later picture corresponding to the letter according to the letter. There are two difficulties in a healer associative neural network. One of is the problem of pattern recognition. Uh, this is because the data dimension of the input um, do not match. Uh, the input and output represent different physical meanings and should be represented by different neurons. The second is the state space is not uniformly distributed, which means that the orthogonality Cognality condition cannot be satisfied. So for the evaluation part, uh, we use FH, which refers to the fraction of hits, uh, and the FFA means the uh, fraction of force around. MSE refers to the mean square error. So the MSE is commonly used to evaluate the performance of a neural network. We, the mean square error of prediction, well, it's proper as a criterion for selecting variables. Uh, it's a mathematic formula will be presented in the paper. So in this project, we use the mean square error to be our prediction error value. So the neural network will adjust its weight based on the mean square error value. As for a fraction of hits, uh, usually used for evaluating the image recognition. So just like its name, uh, the fraction of hits means the ratio of the number of black pixel value that hits the correct place. So in words, it means uh, the, the number of the black pixel value that occurs on the correct places. So we present the pseudocode on the right. And as for a fraction of force around, which refers to the black pixel value that occurs on the wrong place. So we will calculate the ratio of the number of black pixel value that hits the wrong place to the total number of black pixel value. So uh, here is the scatter plot of noisiness and noise corrupted corresponding to the FH and FFA values. So as you can see, when we after we adding the noise, the, F, the FFA will have a dramatic fluctuation. Compared with noises, we only have uh, 0.1 to 0.3 values of FA, but for noise corrupted, the FFA will reach the highest of 0.8 values. So, for more clear comparison, we can see the output result. On the left is noiseless output image. Uh, as you can see, there is a lot of black dots that happen in the wrong place. But on the right, after we adding the noise, which is a noise corrupted, the entire layer was corrupted and we cannot figure it out what kind of layer it is because we add a huge noise in that image. So uh, the, right now I'm gonna show you the code uh, to see how we train the entire neural network and what's the result. So here is a necessary library. So if you want 
to run the code successfully, please make sure you already install the every library. So we run the code. And here is the data, data set process. We read the data and we convert into a matrix. So the computer program will know how to compute it. And here is a model we define. It's a deep neural network. We have one input layer um, and two hidden layers and one output layers and the activate function is ready. Uh, there are all linear layers fully connected. There's, so uh, we run this cell box and we define a gesture data set. Uh, this is used for uh, splitting the data set into training data set and test data set. And uh, also label, we add the label. The label is an image as well. These are parameters of our neural network. So the learning rate will be 0.01 and the batch size is 24, the epoch will be 800. And we use the mean square error as our loss function value and the optimizer will be added. So right now the neural network is start to trend. And as you can see, the loss value is going to converge and the mean error is decrease every time. It's gonna take a while, so we have to stop here for a little bit. Okay, so after finishing the uh, training, we can start our test process, but before that, we, we can see the result of training output. Right now, we are start to calculate the FH and FFA. And we, uh, this is function used for generating the Gaussian noise. Uh, as, as we described in the paper, here is the standard deviation we use to generate the Gaussian noise and the cross-section percentage. Okay, so this table is uh, well, well describing the FH and FFA of the, of the noiseness input. So uh, on the right is the corresponding character. And here's a scatter plot. We can see for noiseness training, there is a slightly fluctuation. Oh. Uh, we, can, we can see the training image right here. And uh, the output will be like this. And here is our noise image data set. So after adding the noise, like we can see the cross section, 10%, 20%, 25%, with the higher cross section, we have a higher error values of FH and FFA. So we plot it out and we can finally see the results. It's gonna take a while. Okay, so, Below is our input image with a specific cross section. Um, if we zoom out, we can see like there is a lot of white dots on the image. So for 35, it's the highest cross section we use. Um, you can see there is a lot of white dots on the gesture image. And after the entire test process, uh, there will be a folder on your desktop and you can click it and we can see the output result. So 
here is basically the result we um we get so let me zoom out so the entire letter image was already uh, corrupted and we can clearly see what it looks like because if you adding the image into a if you're adding the noise into an image, the neural network cannot uh, fully capture the features. So uh, the generalized ability will will now be very will be very well. So in the follow up research, we also found several interesting phenomena. For example, when doing the training test um, process, we found the normalized. Uh, training performance will be better. This is because once the pixel value is limited to the O to one, the computational requirements of the neural network are greatly reduced. So uh, we can get a higher accuracy rate due to the razor theory. Uh, okay, uh, that's end of the presentation. Thank you.